Alrighty. Welcome everyone to the National Catholic College Admission Association College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer your questions. My name is Chelsea and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to the presenters at any time. This is one of many sessions happening, so be sure to check the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash nccaa. And I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, and that is St. Mary's University of Minnesota. All right. There we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Nicole Winnegar, um, and I am one of the admission counselors at St. Mary's. Um, so just a little bit about us, our tradition and history. So we are a private liberal arts college. So um, you'll be taking uh, classes in all sorts of areas, not just in your particular major. We are also Roman Catholic and Lasallian. So these are some photos of Winona, Minnesota, which is where we are located. Um, as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful with all of the, the surrounding um, environment. We have bluffs that students like to go hiking in. Um, we're right off of the Mississippi River that we can go uh, canoeing and kayaking in. And then of course, um, all of our other um, downtown activities that we can do, the Mar Minnesota Marine Art Museum, um, which has, uh, changing exhibits throughout the year that are all revolving around the marine life that is in Winona. So a little bit about our academics. So we have about 40 majors with different pathways on campus. So two of our newer kind of more popular uh, pathways include the nursing program and a three plus two physician's assistant program. So that latter program, the way that it works is you do three years of undergraduate on our campus and two years over at Mayo Clinic. And those students that are in that program are actually handpicked by Mayo themselves. Um, and then again, our nursing program, um, our clinicals will, um, we have several different locations for our clinicals, including Mayo Clinic, Marshfield, uh, Gillette Children's in the Twin Cities. And then of course we have all updated technology with our nursing program as well. And the, the building was completely re renovated for that particular major. We also have 36 different minors that pair very well with our majors and an interdisciplinary general education program that we call Integratus. And so our general education program is tailored to a specific minor pathway. So that way you have an integrated minor into your degree by the time you graduate. So those general education classes are going to be working towards something and not just a random class. Um, we also have a LaSallean Honors Program. The students wanted to have a more accelerated alternative program to the general education. Um, and that one is going to be more discussion-based um, instead of lecture-based. And then our average class size is about 16. So you'll get to know your classmates and your professors very, very well. Our athletics, we have 17 NCAA Division, Division III sports. Um, some of those include soccer, hockey, basketball. Um, unfortunately, we don't have football, but we always say that our hockey team is basically our football team. Um, about a third of our students are student athletes, whether they're participating in one, two, or even three different sports. And that is because our, our professors are super understanding that our students are both students and athletes or are involved in other, um, other things besides their um, academics. And so they're able to make those um, game schedules work. We also have five intramural sessions and seven different club sport opportunities if students wanted to be involved in athletics but not quite have the rigor of the training schedule and that varsity game schedule. Our student involvement. So we have over 50 clubs and organizations on our campus, whether that be our biology clubs, ecology, and other types of academic clubs, multicultural, including our diversity cafe, um, service, including um, Habitat for Humanity, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, um, our special interest clubs, um, ballroom dance, knitting, 
um, art and everything in between. Um, additionally, if you wanted to ever start a club that we don't have, all you have to do is grab a few friends and an academic advisor and you have yourself a club. 65% um, of our students are involved in some sort of club or organization, and many of them are actually involved in what's called our Student Activities Committee, which helps to put on the different activities on our campus. So trivia nights, bingo nights, um, we'll have big kind of like carnivals on our campus, and that's all done by student activities. Student Senate also helps with the budgets on our, um, of these clubs and helps with kind of the big controversial topics that are going on on campus to help find solutions. We also have our campus ministry that every student is involved or is available to be involved in. Um, one of my favorite things was a soul trip. So it's a, basically a mission trip that you can do during your spring break. Um, we also have peer ministers within every single um, dorm building. So this is a student that is hired by campus ministry and paid by campus ministry. And they are um, kind of the faith presence in the building. So if they ever, if other students ever wanted to um, start a prayer group or something like that. And then our financial aid. So uh, obviously the FAFSA is very, very important. Um, opens October 1st. Um, we highly recommend that you fill that out so we can determine what type of um, aid that is available to you through us and through the government. And then um, that's our FAFSA code there. Um, we do offer, or we do send out our financial aid letters about mid-January, so you'll be able to see them fairly soon. Um, and then we have several different institutional-based scholarships. So Merit is one of the huge ones. It actually basically cuts the cost in half for most of our students. Um, a visit scholarship, if you come to visit our campus during your senior year of high school, um, then you can get a $1,000 renewable scholarship. Um, and then a talent-based scholarship, art, music, theater and dance, um, if you go to a Catholic high school and if you have any alumni in your family. And of course, you can also bring any outside scholarships to our institution as well. And that is where you can find us. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. All right, next up we have Deauville University. Hello everyone, my name is Eliza. I am from Deauville University. I'm just gonna pull up my screen. All right. Sorry, bear with me. All right, Deuville University. So we are located in Buffalo, New York. Go Bills. I cannot get through that without saying it. Um, so Buffalo, New York is known as the city of good neighbors. We are very near a lot of different things. Um, so it is a six hour drive to New York City, two, two hour drive up to Toronto, 30 minutes to Niagara Falls and five minutes from Canada. We are right on the Canadian border and on a nice clear day, you can see across the lake um, to Toronto, which is one of my favorite parts because it is a very nice view. Um, Niagara Falls is definitely something that the people of Buffalo take for granted. It is not far from us at all and absolutely breathtaking when you see it for that first time. So who we are as an institution, um, we do have online and on-campus programs. Um, we've got about 3,000 students in total. So about half, just of over half are undergraduate and 44% is grad. Um, students that go from beginning to end. And about 15% of our population is also international students. Um, we are ranked the top private university in Western New York. And we take great pride in the fact that we do not um, utilize teaching assistance as a main source of teaching courses. So there are some courses that are a little bit more hands-on and we'll bring in a teaching assistant to work alongside the professor. Um, but it will not be taught primarily by a teaching assistant. You will be working from faculty that is, you know, the highest in their field and still practicing today, um, depending on the program. We do also have service learning opportunities. So volunteering, we do take great pride in giving back to the community. Part of our motto is never refuse to serve. So we do take that um, inside and out of the classroom in most of what, most if not all of what we do. Um, there are local, national, and international rotation sites that we'll send our students to. Um, 
and various opportunities with faculty. One of my favorite stories from service learning is that there is an alum who was a nursing student and now has her own clinic in the in Central America. And so we will send students to go work there, get their practice in and also be able to study abroad, which is very fun. We do also have simulation learning and peer mentorship and we take great pride in holistic patient care. Um, so we do a lot of simulation learning. We are primarily um, medical focused and I will get into our majors in just a second here. Um, so simulation learning, taking our students directly into a setting that they can practice different medical things that they've learned in the classroom in a low risk situation. So not only do we use the mannequins that breathe and you can do different things too, but also we'll bring in actors and actresses to play patients and their families. So you're not only learning how to work with a patient, but you're also learning how to deliver news to a family and work with them. These simulations will be set up not only as a hospital, but also as a living room or a waiting room. Um, so you can get all different aspects of situations that you might be in. Um, for holistic patient care while being in the simulation, you're not just working with nurses if you're a nursing student, because realistically that's not what's going to happen. So we bring in everyone so that you can come together and learn from each other. If you're making a mistake now, it's better to do that and to learn how to do better um, because you are in that low risk situation. Most of this is done in our health professions hub, which is a brand new building that was just finished last year. Um, in there, we have a ton of simulation centers. We have a dietetics kitchen, a pharmacy, and a physical therapy area. This is not only just for the students to be able to learn and practice, but it's also for the community on the west side of Buffalo. So the west side of Buffalo is primarily um, minority and immigrant populations that haven't always had the best access to healthcare. And by making the health professions hub, we are able to give that back to the community. For academics, we do have four different schools, the School of Health Professions, School of Nursing, School of Arts and Sciences, and School of Pharmacy. So School of Health Professions is PA, Cairo, OT. School of Nursing is all of our different nursing programs. Arts and Sciences, or SASE as we like to call it, is bio, math, chemistry, and then School of Pharmacy is, of course, pharmacy. Um, all of these programs can be applied into directly as a first time in college student. So we do have the opportunity for you to apply, for example, to occupational therapy, you would get your bachelor's degree and then go right into your occupational therapy master's program um, without having to reapply or take any tests. Um, that is very big for all of these programs. For OT, you can finish in five years. Um, PT, I believe at six. And then physician assistant, which is probably our most popular um, application to apply into. You can finish in four and a half years and get your bachelor's and your master's at the end of that. Um, it is an accelerated program and it is our only program with a deadline. The rest of the programs um, are on a rolling admission basis. These are all of our athletics. We did recently change from division three to division two. Um, and so these are our sports that we have available to offer. Um, like Nicole mentioned, we also do not have football, but if you are interested in watching football, the bills are not very far from us and are very fun to watch. Um, with that change, we also became the saints and we have two St. Bernard puppies on our campus that are just the sweetest things. Um, Admission requirements, we do have a free app application through our website or through the Common App, and we'll need your transcripts either from your high school or if you're transferring um, from any colleges that you've attended, or if you've taken college courses, bring those in as well. Grad varies by degree, so talk to me after. Um, and then merit-based scholarships, when you apply, you're automatically considered. And I know I'm running out of time. So here's my contact information. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much. Next up, we have the Universidad de Nevada. Super, so thank you, thank you. Let me just kind of grab my presentation and share it. Um, here we go. 
Okay, so I think we can leave. So first of all, uh, thank you for joining us in this afternoon. Um, on a Sunday afternoon, come and listen to us. So I really appreciate for you just taking part of this presentation. My name is Christina McCarthy, and I I'm gonna talk to you about the Universidad de Navarra. Okay, Universidad, you have my name and my address there. And so Universidad, let's see, otherwise this is not going through. Here we go. So Universidad de Navarra is located in Spain. Okay, we're in the north of Spain, in the city of Pamplona, about an hour south of Spain. The photos that I'm sharing here with you, uh, you see the region of Navarra, you see then the city of Pamplona, where the university is, very green, very open, the whole region is absolutely beautiful. We're very close to the mountains, to the Pyrenees, but we're also very close to the sea in San Sebastian. You also have a photo of our campus, um, it's, it's about 200 hectares, pretty big. And again, yes, very open, very green. Uh, it's just, it really breaks kind of the traditional idea of a European campus. No, it's open, green, very big. We have a five mile run within the campus uh, and I don't know how many trees, <laughs> a lot of them, right? Um, and then in the map ups in, on the right corner, you see the, the uh, map of Spain where you see Pamplona, our main campus where all our undergraduate degrees are, but the university has a total of seven campuses in the world. You can see San Sebastian, Barcelona, Madrid, and also New York, Sao Paulo, and Munich. These last ones, the international ones, I mean, the, the, the ones outside of Spain are just for graduate school, okay? Now, um, when I talk about Navarra, I wanna talk about three main things. I wanna talk about the internationality of the university, I wanna talk about the personal attention to our students. And I'm gonna lastly talk about academic, of academic offer that we have, which is I always have at affordable because our prices are very affordable compared to uh, the prices that many universities offer here in the States. Um, we are an internationally ranked university. You see here that we're one of the first private universities in Spain. Uh, I didn't say at the beginning that we're a private nonprofit um, in, University, sorry, and with a, with a strong Catholic inspiration. Uh, we've been ranked 45 in the world. I know employers have ranked us 45 in the world in, in, in how much they like our graduates, right? And also we're among the top 100 in, in sustainability. You know, our campus is completely sustainable. Um, this internationality is also seen in the internationality of our students. About 28% of our students come from outside Spain, are international students uh, that come from 55, I'm sorry, 108 different nationalities. So a campus, um, although we're a Spanish university with a very strong Spanish identity, we have a really strong and diverse um, campus. And also the international is seen in that uh, we have agreement, 459 agreements with universities in the world. So we want the students to come and study with us in Pamplona in Spain, but also when, when to, we do expose them to, to other countries in exchange programs and exchange years. Uh, the second aspect that I want to talk about, I mentioned at the beginning, is personal attention to, to our students. Um, we have a total of 12,000 students and we have a professor student ratio of one to 12. So our professors, most of them, 98% um, of them are PhDs and they, they are um, really available to our students to, to, for questions, for you know, inquiries, for whatever they need. And we, we, we even have, um, no, every student that it's admitted in Navarra is assigned a mentor. The mentor is a professor in his school and just for whatever the student needs, you know, maybe she, I mean, at the first year, it needs a lot of support for, for the transition, for the change, for the adaptation. I mean, the, the professors are available for that, but even later on during the years for any need they need for even for the, for, for the professional goals. Um, in terms of academics, uh, we have a, a total of 12 schools. I'm not going to list all the, I don't have a slide with all our degrees because we have 80 programs and degrees. So we don't have everything, but we have quite a, a wide um, offer. And in the schools that you see on screen, you can see that we have go from economics, architecture, law, social science, medicine, nursing. So we have a wide, I mean, our offer is pretty, pretty consistent. And here, what I would like to, to explain about Navarra is that Navarra, and I always explain that Navarra is an international bilingual school. And what I mean by that is that students don't have to be bilingual when they start, but everybody graduates bilingual. So coming to Navarra means that you can expose yourself and, and learn a second language that, therefore you will, all our students always graduate bilingual Spanish English. It's an additional challenge to the college experience, but it's an incredible asset that you take with you for your personal and professional life. Um, we have different ways of incorporating the non-Spanish speakers. I mean, if you speak some Spanish, wonderful, but if not, that's not a problem. And we have uh, several ways of incorporating those non-Spanish speakers or medium Spanish speakers, right? And so we have bilingual degrees, 50-50, where they can start their first year with all classes in, in, in English. And we also have a foundation year where the, the student takes um, classes of Spanish the first year. 
um, when they, when during the foundation year, I'm sorry, and then at the same time, college level classes in English to, to really kind of bring him up to the level required. Um, admission process, um, it's all, we, we, we're not in the common app. Uh, we are, we have our own admission. Um, let me open this because I don't know, there you go. Um, it's all done through our webpage. Everything is done online. Everything can be done in English. Uh, the main source of information is your high school transcript. Then you'll have an interview with an admission counselor and then we, you will have a test with us. So that's kind of the, the admission process, very straightforward, but you have to do that directly with us. Financial aid. We do, all our students pay the same. We make no difference between national and international students. Every student is eligible to our, to our financial aid, which is need-based. And then we are also FAFSA eligible, which means that the student in the US, when you complete your FAFSA here in the States, whatever student loans, okay? Student loans the government gives you, you can use those funds to pay to Nevada. So we start with very affordable prices. Um, then you, you can apply for a financial aid. We also have a couple of merit-based, merit depending on the GPA. And then finally, you can also resource to the, to the FAFSA student loans too, if you need an extra hand with your, with your payment. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, and then like to finish up, just the, the I mean, campus life, like sports, every kind of um, club and thing that you want. My time is coming up and I just leave you this last quote of our campus and just thank you for, for your time on this Sunday. Thank you so much. Alrighty, next up we have Loyola University, New Orleans. Thank you, Chelsea. Hello, everyone. Um, in one second, I'm gonna pull up my presentation as well and we'll get started. Uh, a lot of info in a short amount of time, so I'm kind of run through everything as quickly as I can and hopefully share information that, you know, should be pretty relevant today. Um, so obviously, as the name implies, we're Loyola University in New Orleans. We're one of the 28 Jesuit colleges and universities in North America and proud to be a part of that tradition. Um, such a big part of our experience for our students um, is the opportunity to be in New Orleans and everything that comes with such a rich cultural experience here. I can say a lot of similar things that you're going to hear from other colleges in terms of what you'll be offered and services provided, but the thing that's so unique here is the opportunity to get here in New Orleans where there's always something going on. If you're a very outgoing person, if you love the idea of taking part in you know, everything that the culture has to offer, this is the place to be. We have 130 something days of festivals in the city, so if you do the math, that's one every three days is starting up. Um, this weekend, if you were here and you're a student, you have French Quarter Fest going on concerts, big acts that are coming to perform. The next two weekends is Jazz Fest, which is our second largest festival after Mardi Gras. Pelicans basketball on right now, so there's always something going on in this beautiful city. Currently, as you can see, we have a unique set of four seasons here in the city of New Orleans, and we're somewhere between Mardi Gras and Crawfish season right now. Um, so again, very exciting uh, experience here. A little bit about the schools, you can kind of wrap your head around us. You see a picture of our campus in the back. Even though we are an urban campus, you do see we have a very traditional uh, green sprawl type of area. We're one of the smaller schools that you're going to be looking at likely, roughly 3,200 undergrad students, but yet we offer the same amount of programs that you'll find at much larger institutions with almost 120 undergrad programs at the university. Um, we have three kind of major senior colleges. Our arts and sciences is the largest in terms of the number of programs. This is going to be all of your hard sciences, the pre-health sciences. Um, we just launched last year our Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. It's a direct entry four-year BSM program that we're really excited about. And you see a couple of the other examples here. This includes our humanities and liberal arts programs. Um, the College of Business is probably the smallest of our three. All the degrees are actually listed here. So you see the, the number of concentrations. We did add entrepreneurship this year as well. Uh, so really excited about that. Our portfolio program does require students to do an internship. We pair students up with an executive mentor in the city of New Orleans and have other unique opportunities um, for our students in the College of Business. And the third, and this is probably like our niche area and what we're probably best known for at Loyola, which makes sense for being in the city of New Orleans, is the College of Music and Media. And these are all of our creative performing arts professions, music and theater arts, our School of Music Industry, which are kind of our more popular and our more sexy programs right now, so to say. Uh, we have an urban and hip hop program for students interested in that specific genre of music. Um, the producer, uh, the um, chair of our program right now actually produced for big acts like Cash Money Records back in the day. That's Lil Wayne, the rapper, if you know, Lauren Hill and some other big names. Uh, and the School of Communication and Design, which is our mass comm program, journalism, advertising, public relations um, in those areas. So this is one of our best areas. We're a great landing place for students that might be musically inclined, but maybe you want to major in something else. You still have access to all the studios. You can take classes. You can minor. You can be a part of an ensemble. 
you have access to all of the creative outlets, even though you might want to major in one of the other degree programs. So we're really excited about those opportunities for those students. Um, hopefully you're excited and you want to apply. We always encourage every student that's interested to do an application. It is free. It doesn't cost anything. So there's no financial commitment to see that process through. You have the relevant dates here on the right hand side of this. I usually tell students that I know there's a lot of stuff to digest about the admissions process. One of the most important things is just to be aware of dates and deadlines. That's half the battle. As long as you do things, you know, on time, uh, you're really doing yourself a favor. We're on the Common App, so it's going to be the easiest way for you to apply to us. And you see the basic information that we need here. One thing to note is that we are going into our third year being a test blind institution. A lot of schools are test optional, but we are test blind. And the difference is, is we don't use tests at all. We don't want to see it as the name implies. We're blind to it. So you don't even need to waste sending in a, a test score to us. So hopefully, whew, big sigh of relief, it takes a little bit of pressure off that we are not using tests in our uh, admissions process. For those of you that might be interested in any of the music and media programs, there's the additional step of the submission of a portfolio, an interview for audition. We have all the requirements listed on the website. There's a colleague of mine that works specifically with you. Her, her contact information is listed here. So we do have a person that will work with you specifically um, on those steps if you are interested in one of those programs. One thing we like to highlight, if any of you are in an AP or an IB curriculum, we like to think that we have a pretty generous uh, credit policy. You see here IB, five, six, or seven scores, um, three, fours, or fives on the AP. And we do guarantee up to a full year's worth of credits, depending on how many courses you took. And any IB diploma um, completers here, you will get a full year worth of credit. Um, that's pretty big. So, you know, please keep that in mind. In terms of scholarships, there's a lot of opportunity that are there. Almost every single student is going to receive some, some, some form of financial aid at the university. They come in the form of merit scholarships, talent scholarships, need-based aid as well. That kind of rounds it out. I put my contact info here. One other thing I like to share is that we're very proud of the fact uh, our diversity at the university. Uh, we're 52% students of color. 54% of our students come from outside of the state of Louisiana, so from other parts of the country and the world. 40% of our students are Pell eligible in terms of financial need, and one third of our students are first generation in their family. Um, so we're very proud of the fact that we are walking the walk in terms of providing access to education at a private Jesuit liberal arts institution. That's it, Chelsea. I'm right under six minutes. So thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, next up we have St. Louis University. Hello everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen as well. Okay, so my name is Erin Gallagher. I am one of the admission counselors at, located at St. Louis University in St. Louis, um, Missouri. We do have two campuses located, um, one in St. Louis and one in Madrid, Spain. St. Louis University is a mid-sized Jesuit um, institution with just under 8,000 undergraduate students enrolled. And we are the second oldest Jesuit university founded in 1818. And we're the first university founded west of the Mississippi. What does it mean to have um, the Jesuit education? It's really caring for the whole person, cura personalis. Um, we really focus on educating all of our students academically, socially, physically, and spiritually. We also believe in academic excellence, social justice, and being a person for and with others. One of the examples, the way that our SLU um, faculty, staff, and students live out this Jesuit mission of being men and women for and with others is through service. In the last year, we've had almost 2 million community service hours, which are completely unmandated, just because all of our um, student faculty and staff really want to make a difference in the St. Louis area. While we are Catholic and a Jesuit institution, we are home to all faiths. We have nearly 90 undergraduate programs and a slew of minors and concentrations in addition to that. We have 15 programs ranked in the top 50 in the nation, and all of our programs are direct admit direct entry programs, meaning that when you apply to SLU, you'll be able to start getting into those classes as early as your first or second semester to make sure that you really want to be in those programs and go into those fields post graduation. We do have four competitive freshman entry only programs. The first is six year doctorate of physical therapy, then a five year masters of occupational therapy, four year bachelors of nursing, and then also our flight science for any um, students who want to become a pilot. 
We do also have still deciding options for any of our students who aren't quite sure what they'd like to be involved or do um, for a major, such as our business still deciding, our health sciences still deciding, and then a general still deciding option as well. We have 30 different clubs, um, sports teams, 50 intramural programs, and 150 student organizations, ranging from fraternity and sorority life, multicultural fraternities, and um, study abroad opportunities for our students as well. We also have a ton of service organizations on campus, dance organizations, and then even um, a professional DJ booth for any students who wish to have their own radio show. We are a Division I sports um, school, the only university located in the St. Louis area, um, or the St. Louis City area, with D1 sports, and we have 18 of those on campus. We um, also, as I mentioned, have that study abroad opportunity to go to our Madrid Spain campus, but also have 45 other programs available as well. Next slide. If you are ready to apply and become a Billiken, you can apply to our website or via the Common app. We will ask that you send in an official transcript and for any of our international students, um, you'll need to send in some English proficiency scores, which all of your all of our counselors can help you get that information. Um, we do also recommend applying with letters of recommendation, a resume, and then all of our admission counselors do offer admission interviews, both virtually and in your area. And then we are test optional, meaning that if you wish to submit your test scores, you can, um, but it is not required for any um, admission purposes. Going through our admission pathways, we have three different pathways. The first one is early decision, meaning that this is a binding agreement that you will attend SLU um, come your, the fall of your first year. And um, this deadline is November 1st. Admission status notification will be by December 1st, and you will be asked to withdraw all of your applications from other institutions. We recommend that students who do not um, need to see the financial aid package prior to making a decision can um, apply via that pathway. Then our next one is early action. This is a non-binding um, agreement, so that means that you can apply anywhere else and you can go anywhere else. There's no um, locked in um, decision with that. Deadline is December 1st. Admission status notification is by February 1st, but it is on a rolling basis in that time frame. And then we anticipate that most of our students will select this pathway. Then our last decision group is the regular decision. This is also non-binding. Deadline is as space is available and admission status notification is by April 15th if applying by March 20th. We recommend the regular decision pathway for students who wish to get that seventh semester of high school um, grades on their transcript to help benefit their admission. And that is all I have for you today. I know that was really a quick overview of everything, um, but I will drop all of my contact information in the chat um, in case anybody has any questions about all of that. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank you. All right, and then we have St. John's University. Hello, everybody. Just give me one moment to share my uh, presentation. Hold on a second. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna to talk to you today about St. John's University. Uh, we are located, we're a, uh, very proud to be a New York City school um, and being a part of New York City has um, a lot of advantages, which I'm going to be telling you about today. Um, so what you see here in the picture is the uh, front gate of St. John's University. It doesn't look like New York City because we're not located in the heart of New York, in Manhattan. We're actually located on the eastern end of New York in the neighborhood of Queens. Um, so what you get is a New York City experience, but with a more traditional uh, college campus feel. We actually have like space between buildings, grass. Uh, it's more of a traditional college campus, but with New York City truly at your fingertips. Uh, the best way I can describe St. John's University is by presenting our four core values. Um, St. John's University, 
Roberts is a Catholic university. Uh, it's also a Vincentian university. So we were founded by members of the Order of St. Vincent. And um, that founding really is um, the core of what we believe at St. John's University. And that's producing, um, producing people who will and make the world a better place. Uh, we're also a metropolitan university. So St. John's University is a New York school. Uh, and we're really proud to be uh, part of that urban uh, environment. And finally, we're a very global institution in two different ways. We have an incredibly high number of students who choose to study abroad. And we also have a very diverse student body. Students from all over the world and all over the United States attend St. John's. To give you a better idea of where we're located, um, as you can see here, uh, we are located in Queens, uh, and that is here on the eastern end of New York. We're close to the train, and so you don't need a car, uh, and you won't feel uncomfortable not having a car. Really, you are part of, um, you're, you're very mobile. You can explore New York as much as you want. Um, and Queens is our main campus. We have other smaller campuses, one uh, for the business school, which is in Manhattan, and another smaller campus in Staten Island. We also have full campuses in Rome, a location in Paris, and a, um, and a uh, uh, partner school in Limerick, Ireland. Um, we have about 17,000 students. So we're one of the larger Catholic universities in the United States. Um, but our student to teacher ratio is quite small, 17 to one. So you won't have really big classes at St. John's University. It's, a, it's very personalized, professors know who you are. Um, we're a division one athletic school. So we have 17 sports teams, basketball being the one that gets the most attention. Um, there's no shortage of ways to get involved on campus. All of our students are very involved in cultural clubs, academic clubs, social clubs. Um, and there are over 180 student organizations. And we have a huge alumni network, which really gives us a great advantage. If you look at the picture on the screen, you can see kind of where we're located, the eastern end of New York City, but you can see all the skyscrapers in Manhattan in the distance. Um, we have over 100 different majors. With 17,000 students, there are a lot of choices for what you, uh, what you choose to study. Everything from business, science, professional programs, uh, lots of liberal arts and sciences, psychology, uh, English literature. So it's a wide range of programs that you can choose from at St. John's. Uh, you absolutely can live on campus. It's not required, but thousands of students do live in a section of our campus called the Residence Vill Resident Village. Uh, and that's in the picture. That is that it's a great community of students, but it's also uh, very easy to leave campus and, uh, and go anywhere in New York. Um, I mentioned before that we have a lot of alumni and those alumni help us to uh, have helped us to develop really great connections to organizations and employers uh, and companies in New York. And so we do a great job of connecting our students to various internships and, um, and job opportunities after, uh, after leaving St. John's. The location really makes a difference. I mean, we really do have relationships with every, if you're a business major, we have relationships with every financial firm, investment bank, um, consulting company. Uh, if you're a science major, every major research institution and hospital system. So it's, uh, it's really uh, impressive and robust what we do for our students' careers and for their uh, career outcomes. Um, St. John's University has rolling admissions, meaning that there's no specific deadline except one early action deadline, and that's December 1st. But if you apply after December 1st, we continue to accept applications. Um, for the third year in a row, we are test optional. So the SAT or the ACT are optional, um, this, including this year. And we are on the Common App. Um, I wanna talk to you about scholarships very quickly. Uh, the biggest scholarship that we offer is the Merit Scholarship. It's an academic scholarship based on your, um, your academic history, and that can cover a significant portion of the tuition. 
We also have other great scholarships that you can apply to that can be added to your academic scholarship. So our students really are covered quite a lot. Um, so that's all, and uh, those are our social media, and I'm going to drop my uh, contact information, and if anybody has questions, please feel free to contact me anytime. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. At this time, I'd like to welcome everybody back on screen so we can hear from you each one more time. So my question for all of you is what advice do you have for students who are going into the search process either now or in the near future? And we'll go back up to St. Mary's University of Minnesota to start. Yeah, so I just recently actually graduated from college. So I have lots of advice I could give, but I think one piece of advice that I think is really important is to really make the most out of every college visit that you go on. Um, I know at St. Mary's, we allow students to attend classes, visit with professors. Um, you can go to lunch with students. And then of course, meeting with me and meeting with any of the other counselors taking a tour. Um, so if you can do all of those things, I highly recommend doing it because that can really solidify um, just how you feel on the campus and if you feel like it's the right fit for you. Wonderful, thank you. Do you have a university? Um, I, I do want to reiterate what Nicole just mentioned. I think that's really good advice. Um, I do also want to say don't lose yourself in the process. Um, it can be a really scary time. You know, you're making a really big decision and you might be going far away, but um, remember not to lose yourself in what you really want to do. And remember that it's also a really exciting time. Um, this is the time when you're really going to find yourself and understand who you are as a person. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I will piggyback on their on their uh, advice, which I think is pretty sound. And I mean, uh, my main um, advice is just enjoy the process. Really enjoy it. You're in a wonderful time in your in your life. You have a lot of opportunities in, in front of you, and don't don't allow the stress to overcome the process. Just enjoy it. Thank you, Loyola University. Yep, like I said in my presentation, I think the big thing is doing things in a timely manner. Dates, deadlines are very important. We all have a habit of waiting till the last minute sometimes, but you do yourself a favor if you start earlier and do things timely. Thank you. St. Louis University? I would say take advantage of your admission counselors. They know everything there is to know about their university. And if they don't know it, then they know who to get in contact with. Um, at the school. So just ask them questions, be in constant communication. They are totally there to assist you. We are totally there to assist you. Thank you. And St. John's. Yeah, and my uh, piece of advice is to try to make connections with current students. Um, if many of our universities offer chat, uh, uh, chat functions with current students, or events that feature like uh, current students. And I think that's one of the most important insights that you can get so that you can make your final decision on which university you attend. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, well, that brings us just about up to time here for, for this session. So I wanna send a huge shout out to our presenters for putting all this information together and spending your uh, Sunday afternoon here with us um, and to our uh, participants as well. Thank you for being here today. Uh, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick uh, five question survey. It's very brief, but we appreciate any feedback you can provide. Uh, we encourage you to check back the schedule and sign up for more sessions. There's a lot going on today. Um, if there's any that you haven't seen or weren't able to jump into, all the sessions will be recorded uh, and they will be available at strivescan.com slash NCCAA. Uh, and that's it for us. Thanks again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.